everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Knee Knits. My name is Amy and here I talk about all things knitting and today's video is all about everything I knit in 2023. I'm super excited to be filming this video. I feel like it's the magnum opus of knitting YouTube and I'm so excited to be going through all of the projects that I made in the past year when I finally looked at my Ravelry project pages and my drawers of knitting, I was really surprised at how much I got done this year. So this video is going to be chock full of finished objects. I'm going to be talking about what I liked about each project, what I didn't like, be trying everything on for you. So it's going to be a lot of fun. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you could join. A little bit about me, I am a knitter based out of New England, hence the NE for Knee Knits. I live not too far from Boston with my husband and I work full time as an engineer. I'm really passionate about knitting garments for myself and accessories and gift knitting so there's a big variety of things that I've knit in the past year that I'm gonna share with you all today for my yearly wrap-up videos I go by what year I finished the project so all the projects I'll be sharing today are projects that I finished in 2023 some of them were casted on in previous years but as long as they were casted off in 2023 they will make today's video I do categorize and keep logs of all of my projects in Ravelry so everything I talk about is on my Ravelry page where I have photos, basics about the size I made, the needle size, the yarn. So if you need to go back and reference any of that, you can check out my Ravelry, which is linked in the description box. Additionally, all of my specific measurements will also be in the description box if you would like to know those for reference as I try on different objects and share how they fit. So in 2023, I finished a whopping total of 42 projects, which is a lot. <laughs> Out of those 42 projects, I finished 18 garments, I made 14 accessories, six pairs of socks, and four projects that I categorized as either home goods or kind of other or random. Within those 18 garments, I made seven pullovers, whoever one was a baby size pullover, I made three cardigans, finished seven tees and tank tops, and I also finished one that slip over. And within the accessories category, I knit a total of nine hats, four scarves or shawls or wraps, and one pair of mittens. So let's dive into the projects. I'm going to go in chronological order. So starting out with my very first project of 2023, I knit the Sophie Scarf by Petite Knit. So the Sophie Scarf is just a little garter stitch kind of neck scarf. It's very thin. I made the size large and I I used We Are Knitters the Baby Alpaca in their color Pearl. I used a three and a half millimeter needle and I used 50 grams of the yarn, so exactly one ball. Now the Sophie scarf, I enjoyed knitting. It was a great stash buster. It was a very like relaxing project. I feel like the finished object is not as practical as I want it to be. I feel like I don't reach for it that often. It's kind of out of my style comfort zone and I feel like I can only tie it once and it just kind of looks like a necktie, which depending on your style preference, you might like, you might not like. I personally don't really love this like necktie look and it's very like thin around my neck. And I did do the size large because I wanted to be able to tie it twice or wrap it twice around my neck. But you'll see that although I can do that, it's very tight and this is not comfortable. So I've never found myself wearing it this way because I feel like I'm in a neck brace. <laughs> I like the Sophie scarf. I just don't think it's super practical. I feel like it's too thin to give my neck any real like warmth, but it was a nice project. If you like this style scarf, definitely recommend it. But I think something like the Sophie shawl, Petite Knit's larger style would be better. My next project were a pair of socks that I gifted to a friend and they are the Guernsey sweater socks by Summer Lee Knits. I really like the sock pattern. I think it's a really cute style. The yarn that I used was Sorella Yarns Autumn Tonals color Butterscotch and I used their nylon sock base and I used a 2.25 millimeter needle to make size medium in the pattern. Really cute. The only thing I didn't like was the cabling in the sock pattern. I used a toothpick as a cable needle and I just generally felt like it wasn't worth all of the effort. I would rather stick to sock patterns that don't have cables that require a cable needle, but I still really like the finished result and I really enjoyed the pattern in general. So we have our first garment of 2023 and this is a sweater that I knit for my husband, Nick. This is Petite Knits Hans Tom sweater, which is one of her men's patterns. This is a basic top-down raglan sweater with all over stockinette and it features one by one ribbing details. It's a DK weight pattern and the yarn that I used is Rowan Felted Tweed in the color Camel. 
This yarn is a blend of 50% merino, 25% alpaca, and then 25% nylon viscose for the tweed flex. I knit this on four millimeter needles and I did make gauge and I knit him the size medium, which according to the pattern should have been the correct size for him and give him a couple inches of positive ease. He does find this sweater a little bit tight around the upper chest and his upper arm. So I think if I were to knit it again, I would size up to a size large for him. He also finds this yarn to be itchy. He's not comfortable wearing it without wearing a full long sleeve t-shirt underneath. So if I were to knit another sweater for him, I would definitely go for something a lot softer and smoother, probably a super wash yarn. I do know that a lot of hand dyers have super wash tweed yarns now that I would consider because he does really like the tweed look. I would also change the color of this. I it wasn't really thinking when I picked the yarn for this sweater for him. I thought just like a neutral brown would look good, but it's very close to his skin tone to the point where it like looks a little bit weird because it kind of just blends in with his face. So I am considering over dyeing it, which I've never done before, but I think if it was like a darker brown, it would look a lot better on him. And in general, I mean, I really like the project. It's a really good staple sweater. There's just a lot of things that I would change if I were to redo this project for him. My next project was also a gift knit. So I just have the photo here. And this was a baby sweater that I made for one of my relatives. This is the baby Aosta sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl. It was a really fun project. It was really cute to knit. It was my first baby knit that I ever made. And I tried to squeeze it out of one skein of Sorella Yarns Classic TK in the color Nolita, which is this really nice pink. I did play some yarn chicken. I think I truly needed more than one 100 gram skein of DK weight yarn to make the smallest size. I did go for the newborn size here, but regardless, it was a really cute finished project. Really easy to knit. I really like the buttons. I think it's a really cute detail. So I would definitely do this pattern again if I need to gift knit something else for a baby or a newborn. Would definitely recommend this pattern. And we have my first garment of 2023 for myself, and this is the Moby sweater by Petite Knit. Now this sweater I absolutely love. It is so fun. It was one of my like, I would say a more challenging knit at the time. I was really eager to kind of conquer this project because you know it has cabling, it has this panel down the front. It is a drop shoulder construction and the yarn weight suggestion is a DK weight yarn held with a silk mohair. So about a worsted weight. I knit this with Sanis Garn Double Sunday in the color white and then I held it with Sanis Garn Tin Silk Mohair also in the color white. The Double Sunday was more of like a bleach cool toned white, whereas the Tin Silk Mohair was definitely more of like a natural kind of yellowy cream color. But I think they blended together quite well. You can't really tell at all that they were kind of different tones of white. I knit the size small, which was the suggested size in the pattern for myself. I was able to meet gauge with the suggested needle size of four millimeters and the sweater blocked beautifully. This is definitely one of those knits where before you block it, it's gonna look really tight because all the cables are not relaxed and I was kind of worried that the fit would be too snug, but after I blocked it, it really opened up and it's, I think, the perfect amount of positive ease. I think it has about six inches of positive ease on me and I really like it. I think the detail of the back shoulder is really nice. I wear this sweater all the time. It is super comfortable. It's super stylish. I feel like it's easy to dress up or dress down. The only thing that I would change about this sweater is make it shorter. I definitely knit it a little bit too long where I feel like if I don't French tuck it, I don't really like the way that it looks. And so I feel like I could avoid that if I just knit it a little bit shorter. In general, with all of my sweater patterns, I do shorten the body and shorten the arms pretty much all the time just because I am pretty short. So I just need to do that for my size. I did make the sleeve significantly shorter than what was recommended in the pattern. My next project was the Bothy hat, which is a hat pattern by Isolde Teague. I made this for my husband, Nick, and he loves it. He wears it all the time. It is an all over two by two ribbed hat. You knit it bottom up and the crown shaping is kind of cool. It has like these cabled designs to do the decreases, which I think is a really nice difference from a lot of two by two ribbed hats. The yarn that I used for this was Fulcalana Arweta held double in the color red squirrel. I knit this on 3.25 millimeter needles and made the size adult small to medium and he should have been an adult size large to extra large, but when I cast it on for that size, I could just tell that it was way too big. So I sized down and it fits him perfectly. His head is a little bit bigger than mine, so he's definitely stretched it out to sort of mold to his head shape, but 
I really like this hat pattern. It did only use 100 grams of the fingering weight yarn, which I think is something that I'm looking for in more hat patterns in the future because I do have a lot of single skeins of yarn that could utilize well in a hat. I would really recommend this hat pattern if you're looking for a hat like this. My next project was a pair of DK weight socks that I knit as part of Hobie's No Shades of Grey challenge. The yarn that I used was gifted and it was Hobie's rainbow four ply sock yarn. The pattern I knit was Andrea Maori's Bear Paw Socks, which are one of my favorite DK weight sock patterns. They are knit toe up, they feature two by two ribbing all around and a flegal heel, and I've really enjoyed knitting them. I find it really easy to knit and the sock fit is really good. I did sort of a marling thing with all these different colors and it was fun to knit. DK weight socks knit really fast, but I didn't really love the finished project. I felt like the yarn was kind of stiff and therefore the thickness of the socks were like really stiff. I never really found myself wearing them and I did end up donating them. This is my my Monday sweater, a pattern by Petite Knit. This is a top-down raglan sweater with all-over stockinette and one-by-one -one ribbing details. The yarn that I used for this project was Santa's Garden Sunday in the color marine blue, which is color number 5882. And then the Santa's Garden Tin Silk Mohair that I held with it was in color number 5581. Don't know the color name of the Tin Silk Mohair, but it was a similar kind of navy blue. Now, I absolutely love this sweater. I feel like it's such a staple piece if you're just looking for a basic stockinette raglan sweater, I would definitely recommend this pattern. It's recommended to have six to eight inches of positive ease and I knit the size small. I knit this on four millimeter needles and I ended up not meeting gauge, which I didn't realize till after the fact. My finished garment only has about four inches of positive ease. The gauge per four inches is supposed to be 21 stitches, and I got a gauge of 23 stitches per four inches. And you'll notice that in some of my future projects that I was knitting kind of tightly and not realizing it for like the beginning half of this year. Because of that, this isn't as baggy or as like, you know, it doesn't have as much positive ease as I would like, but I still wear this all the time. I think it fits really well. I think it's just, you know, you can throw it on and it's comfortable. Now, the only thing I don't love about this sweater is the silk mohair choice. The Santa's Garden Tin Silk Mohair, I have grown to not love. It is a little bit itchy and its fiber content is very different from a lot of other silk mohairs on the market. This does have a smaller content of mohair and actually includes some wool, which other brands silk mohairs don't include at all. So it does have a bit of a prickly itch factor that I don't love and it would deter me from using it again in a garment. However, I don't know why, but with this sweater, I feel it a lot more than with my Moby sweater where I also use tin silk mohair. I just find this a little bit itchy and if I were to knit it again, I would prefer using like a Knitting for Olive silk mohair or like an Asayer silk mohair. I prefer those mohairs immensely. But for the Santa's Garden Sunday, the fingering weight merino wool, I love, will continue using. It's my all-time favorite yarn for sure. So yeah, this is my Monday sweater. It's a pattern I definitely would knit again in different colors, you know, pops of colors, neutrals. I used about five skeins of each of the yarns to knit this in my size, so. Yeah, that's my Monday sweater. These are my World Simplest Mittens, a free pattern by Tin Can Knits. I knit these for myself. I made the adult size small and I used Knit Picks Felici Worsted, which is a self-striping yarn. It's a merino and nylon blend, but I don't remember if it's superwash merino or not. It might be, I'm not sure. I also forgot to record the needle size I used for this, so I don't remember. I probably used the needle size recommended in the pattern, and these are super cute. A really nice kind of staple mitten pattern. It is very basic, so pretty easy to follow if you've never knit a mitten before. It's not the most like anatomically correct mitten like construction, but it gets the job done. And yeah, I really like them. I've been wearing them, you know, if I need to pump gas and it's really cold out or that's pretty much it. I did do yarn management to make sure the stripes matched in both of my mittens. They are knit from the cuff to the tip. So when I finished the first one, I then like pulled out the yarn in the ball to then find, you know, the matching place where I started before. And then I got matching mittens, which is super cute. I used 50 grams for these pair of mittens. And if I were to knit them again, I would size up. I did knit the recommended size for my hand dimension. And I feel like they're really like, snug. I think they have zero ease, which is fine, and they do stretch, but I would just prefer a little bit more ease in my mittens, so that's my only recommendation if I were to knit these again. 
This is my town sweater by Ozetta. It is a drop shoulder sweater pattern all over stockinette and it's constructed from the bottom up. So you start down at the bottom and then you knit up and then you pick up for sleeves and it has this nice little one by one ribbed kind of funnel neck, little mock neck collar. Really cute sweater pattern. I knit this out of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted in the color Crane Heather, which is this really nice sort of heathered gray beige. It's definitely a cooler tone beige and I really love it. I really love the yarn. It was just a really enjoyable knitting experience. I feel like it blocked beautifully. Would definitely recommend the Wool of the Andes Worsted. Now the sweater I don't love particularly because I knit it too tightly. I did do the recommended size for myself. I knit the size small on five millimeter needles. However, my gauge was not what the pattern recommended. I was getting 19 stitches per four inches when the pattern calls for 17. So I ended up with a a sweater that has less positive ease than what was recommended and for me this just isn't enough positive ease that like I don't really like it I think it's kind of tight and looks kind of like you know it's not the most relaxed fit it's kind of snug around my hips and my waist and my chest and just I would prefer something a little bit roomier so I am planning on frogging this sweater and repurposing the yarn I might knit a similar sweater to this however I would not knit the pattern again just because I didn't really love the bottom-up construction however it is super beginner friendly so if you've never knit a sweater before I think this would be a good sweater to start with because the skills that you need are very basic and it's very basic shaping for a pretty nice finished object but for me I just prefer drop shoulder sweaters with a little bit more shaping to them so I would probably pick a different pattern and use the yarn in that now this is the second sweater that I knit this year where the gauge was just too small and I don't really know what happened. I think I've always been a tight knitter and I do gauge swatch. I did gauge swatch for this. When I was gauge swatching earlier in the year, I would only knit an exactly four by four inch gauge swatch. And then when I would block them, I would use pins to sort of pin them out to the four by four inch dimensions, therefore stretching the fabric kind of in a way that the fabric was not gonna be like stretched when I was knitting the final garment. So even though I would start knitting thinking my gauge was going to be good, you know, I wasn't really blocking my swatches correctly. So since then I've kind of adjusted my blocking technique or my gauge swatching technique where I will knit a larger swatch than four inches. Like I will try for a whole six inch wide rectangle or square so that way I can measure the inner stitches to be the more accurate measurement and also when I block my swatches I don't really pin them dramatically I do pin them to sort of uncurl the edges but I don't stretch the fabric and that has given me a little bit more accurate of a gauge measurement and I have found since doing that that I do knit tighter and I tend to need to size up needle sizes in the patterns that I knit and so that's what I've been finding with these earlier sweaters from early 2023. You know, I was knitting with the suggested needle size and I'm a tight knitter, so therefore I ended up with sweaters that were just a little bit smaller than recommended. Next up is my Oopbot cardigan. This is an all over color work cardigan that is worked bottom up in the round and then steaked. So this is my first major project with color work and steaking. And it was quite a fun process. I did it as part of a class at my local yarn store. So I was able to get some guidance with all of those new techniques. The sweater, although it was fun to knit, it's not my favorite sweater. It is knit out of Icelandic wool, Istex Alafos Lopi, which is their bulky weight Icelandic wool. And it's very rustic. It has a lot of fibers that come off of the fabric and it's very kind of like toothy and rough. And I also just knit it too big. I knit the size medium and I just didn't really know how to fit it because it's bottom up construction. You know, I didn't really give myself a good fitting garment. So I've actually never worn this despite it being really beautiful. It has these really nice metal buttons. The three colors that I used were indigo, ash heather, and then gray heather. So really nice kind of wintry cardigan. However, I do want to sell it and I actually was able to connect with a fellow knitter who wants to purchase it from me. So I am going to be selling that to her. I'm really excited for this cardigan to end up in a home where it will be well loved and well worn. And I'm glad it's going to another knitter who will appreciate the craftsmanship that went into it. So although I enjoyed the project, didn't end up wearing it, I think it's a happy ending for this Oopbot cardigan. This is my Provence sweater. This was a surprise cast on for me. I knit it as part of the Sorella Yarn Spring Make Along. This is a pattern by Sorella Yarn, and the yarn that I use is Sorella Yarn's Surrey Lace in the color Toile, and I held it double. It's got sort of an open gauge. I knit this on five millimeter needles. It's a top-down circular yoke all over stockinette 
kind of sweater blouse. It has these really nice kind of like bubbled out sleeves, eye cord edging all around, and it has a very flowy, loose fit. I knit the size medium, and that was the suggested size for my bust circumference, and didn't do any modifications to it. I really loved knitting this. I really loved the Surrey lace yarn. This was my first experience with Surrey alpaca, and it was just so dreamy. I absolutely love the finished fabric. It is so soft. It has such a different feel than mohair. It's just so like cuddly and cozy, and I definitely want to utilize this yarn more in my knitting. I kind of want to knit the cumulus blouse, which has a very similar similar vibe to this sweater. You know, I do really enjoy this sweater shape. I'm kind of surprised that I like it because sometimes circular yokes I'm like iffy about, but this one I feel like fits pretty well and I don't have any like issues with how it looks and I really like styling it. I would definitely use the Surrey Alpaca Lace from Sorella again. So this is my Oversized Seasons Cardigan by Ozetta. This is one of those projects that I started back in the fall of 2022. Didn't finish it till the spring of 2023 because it was really slow growing. It's an all-over half fisherman's rib cardigan. It is a raglan and you knit the button band at the same time as the rest of the sweater. This does have an oversized fit which matches the pattern name. I knit the size small on five millimeter needles and the yarn that I use was Lana Grossa Cool Merino in the color gray which is like a chain et style yarn. It has like some multicolors in there and it's just kind of like a nice gray neutral color. This cardigan, I really love the final fit and style of. It's just like your basic, you know, ribbed cardigan. I think it looks really classy. It's really easy to style and throw on as an extra layer. I did really despise knitting this project because it felt so slow. The half fisherman's rib grows, you know, twice as slow as a regular stockinette pattern. So it is kind of deterring me from doing any other half fisherman's rib patterns in the near future. I'm sure I'll do one eventually because I just really like how the pattern looks, but you know, it takes some time and it takes some energy. I remember thinking that the raglan like yoke was too shallow before I joined in the round based on the pattern, but I just trusted the pattern. I did do like a steam block and it ended up being like a good fit. So if you're knitting this and find the same thing, I would recommend maybe doing like a quick mid project block to see that it'll reach your underarm because that half fisherman's rib I find shrinks up before you block it. The yarn and the fabric is very soft. It's very airy. However, it does pill a lot and, you know, in a cardigan, you know, spaces like at the underarms and, you know, where my arm swipes against my body when I walk, I find that this has pilled a lot faster than I wanted it to pill. So I feel like I wouldn't use this yarn again for a garment, but it is like super soft and airy. So I wouldn't like be against this yarn for accessories. I just think in garments, it, you know, it's pilling pretty quickly. Next up, I knit a few yarn cozies as part of Nitty Natty's yarn cozy knit along or make along. These are patterns by Nitty Natty. They're meant to hold 100 gram skeins of yarn to sort of keep them intact and stuff. And it was a fun stash buster. I used a bunch of sock yarns that I had left over from the row one subscription boxes that were gifted to me. And then I crocheted this one. I think this is my only crochet project of 2023. It's the crochet yarn cozy that I knit out of some leftover sock yarn. So nice little stash busters. I do use these. I find them practical when I'm doing like an alternating skein project where the yarn balls need to like move a lot because this keeps them intact because the more you touch your like yarn ball, it'll like, it tends to come undone faster if you're moving it around a lot. So I do use these, not all the time. However, the crochet one I never use. I think I just didn't crochet it to the right dimensions because, you know, I'm not really an avid crocheter. So in terms of like hitting gauge and getting the right tension, yeah, I don't know, was not good at that. So it's actually too small to fit like anything unless I have like a 50 gram ball of yarn. And I think I also did the eye cord too tight, so it doesn't really stretch, but the, the knit ones are really nice and they're super stretchy, so. Yeah, these are my little yarn cozies. All right, now we're getting into summer knits and this was definitely the year of summer knitting for me. I knit so many teas and tanks, like it was, there's a lot. So my first tea of the summer was the Poppy Tea by Petite Knit. This is one of her newer patterns this year. I was really eager to knit it as soon as it came out. So the yarn that I used for this was Kelborn Woolens Mojave, which is a cotton linen blend in their color Electric Blue, which is 
It's just stunning. I mean, it's, it's glowing on camera. I love it. Really cool color. The poppy tee has a contiguous shoulder construction, also known as like English tailoring. So you have this nice little shoulder slope and sleeve cap. It kind of looks like a set in sleeve. So you have more of that like polished shoulder look compared to like a drop shoulder or a raglan construction. I knit the size small on three and a half millimeter needles. I made this kind of cropped. I like the pattern. I like the project. I don't think I wore this as much as as I wanted to. I have a hard time with, I find knit t-shirts, like I'm afraid to get sweaty in them. So I feel like the temperature outside has to be just right for me to want to wear them. Like if it's too hot where I know I'll be sweating, I won't put it on. But then if it's too cold, you know, I'm probably going to opt for a long sleeve. So it's kind of like that weird in-between project where I wish I wore it more, but maybe I'll give it another shot this summer. <laughs> This had about two inches of positive ease on me when I finished it and blocked it. However, this yarn did grow a bit with time. I haven't remeasured it since, but you can see, you know, there's definitely more than two inches of positive ease now. So this is definitely a fabric that will grow over time. So just keep that in mind if you're knitting with it. I did use a little bit less than four skeins of the yarn to complete this t-shirt. This year, I also knit my first Musselboro hat, which is a pattern by Isolde Teague. Now, this was a surprise hit in my wardrobe. This has been my most worn beanie all year. Now, the Musselboro, if you're unfamiliar with it, is actually a double-layered fingering weight hat, and it is knit on whatever size needle that you want to knit with to get gauge. It's actually kind of like a swatchless pattern. So you start knitting, and then you measure your gauge, and then you choose your stitch count based off of that. So the pattern Pattern's very like easy to follow, kind of a fun, like you can cast on at any time and just go. So you start at one tip, you do increases, and then you knit just plain stockinette for a really long time. The yarn that I used was from Dirty Water Dye Works. It is their Lucia Fingering, which is a 7525 Superwash Merino nylon yarn. This is in the color Sprinkle, which has all these fun pops of blue, purple, and green. Now I realized I unfolded this before trying it on, so now I have to refold it to try it back on for you all. But the reason I really like wearing this hat is because it like molds to my head in a way that my other beanies don't. I think it's cause it's like the fingering weight fabric is very flexible and there's like no like shaping. There's no part where like you have to join the brim. There's no like knitted fold lines. So you really just like let it mold to your head. And then as you wear it more, it'll kind of like set into that shape. So yeah, I really love this hat. I'm going to knit more of them. Would definitely recommend the pattern. I did use exactly one skein of this. This was a 100 gram skein of sock yarn and we'll be knitting more of these out of my 100 gram skeins of sock yarn. For me with my knitting gauge, I used a size 3.25 millimeter needle and I ended up getting about seven stitches per one inch to get the hat long enough to do this folded brim. My length between the two crowns of the hat was 19 inches before blocking. So if you want that as a reference your own. I hope that helps. My next project was a gifted blanket and that was the Moonstone plaid blanket which is a free pattern by Two of Wands. This was a commission for my grandmother and I really enjoyed knitting this. It was something totally different from what I'm used to knitting. I don't often knit blankets. I knit this with the suggested yarn for the pattern which is Lion Brand Hue and Me. It's a bulky weight blend of acrylic and wool. My grandmother picked out the color scheme for this blanket so the main color I used was the color Salt which is this nice creamy white and and the accent colors I used were Desert, Werewolf, and Shadow. I think this blanket is beginner friendly, however it is just as much a weaving project as it is a knitting project. The knitting is all garter stitch and you just do garter stitch stripes and you get the plaid effect by weaving in super long strands of yarn into the blanket when it's done. The weaving took me a very long time. You know, it took me about three weeks to knit the actual blanket, but then it also took me a full three weeks to do all of the weaving and the tassels. So so it is a labor of love if you're interested in knitting it, but I think the final result is just stunning. It is a smaller size blanket. I would call it like a lap blanket or a throw. My final dimensions ended up being 44 inches by 49 inches. 
These are my Cliff Walk socks. This is a pattern by Helen Stewart. I purchased her Handmade Sock Society pattern bundle season five, which includes a few different sock patterns that all have some sort of texture or lace. And these ones have these really nice lace pattern. This is a top-down sock with a heel flap and gusset. Knit these for myself out of Birch and Lily Fiber Co. Birch Sock, which is an 80-20 two-ply sock yarn. This is the color Serendipity, which is a really cute purple color. Color. I really love these socks. I found that my gauge was a little bit large compared to my vanilla stockinette socks. I knit these on 2.25 millimeter needles and because of the lace pattern with the yarn overs and such, they are a little bit loose on me. I did the size medium, but if I were to knit these again, I would go down to the size small for myself. This is sort of a coordinating sock, also from the Handmade Sock Society Pattern Bundle by Helen Stewart. These are the Shell Cottage Socks. I knit the accents out of that same yarn that I just used, which was the Serendipity yarn from Birch and Lily, but the main yarn that I used here is Euphoria, also by Birch and Lily. It's this beautiful speckled purple color, and I really love the sort of shell pattern that these socks have. These are mock cables, so didn't need any sort of cable needle for them. Now these, in contrast to the lace socks, these were a lot tighter than my normal gauge because these like the stitch kind of tightens up the fabric a little bit. So I actually find these very hard to put on my foot, <laughs> but once they're on, they fit great. I did use the heel flap and gusset mentioned in the pattern and yeah, they're really cute. I really like having a little handmade sock collection. I love how these coordinate and I love the like accents, I think. It just makes the sock look so much more complete. This is my Cumulus Tee, also a pattern by Petite Knit, and I knit this out of Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the color Dusty Artichoke. This t-shirt I really like wearing. I think the fabric of the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk is really comfortable. It was one of my favorite fabrics to wear this summer, although the knitting experience with it was okay. I don't think it's anything to do with the Pure Silk yarn itself. I just think I'm not a fan of knitting with plant fibers, which I think a lot of people can resonate with, but I think the effort that was needed to knit with it was worth the finished result of the project. I knit this on three millimeter needles and used a little bit less than three and a half balls of the pure silk and I did shorten the body significantly to make it cropped and I think I shortened the sleeves just a little bit as well. It does have all over eye core details which I think is really nice. The v-neck is not too deep on me. I think I'm kind of satisfied with the v-neck depth and the raglan shaping I think Looks pretty nice. I don't know why it dips back in the back a little bit, but it's nothing that has prevented me from wearing it. It's just kind of weird. I don't know. If I were to knit this project again, I would consider making it longer. I think I cropped it just a little bit too much. I think it would do better with like one more inch of fabric. And that was on me. I was just tired of knitting it. So I binded it off early. <laughs> I do still have the leftover yarn. So there is opportunity for me to extend it, but I don't know if I will. So this is it. Cumulus tea. I would knit it again, but not anytime soon. It was just so much effort that I can't think of actually casting it on again, but I do really like the finished piece and it wears very well. This is my camisole number no. five by My Favorite Things Knitwear. This I knit out of knitting for all of cotton merino in the color Dusty Blue Whale. I really like this finished piece. I think it was a pretty straightforward knit. You know, it definitely took some time on the small needles. I knit this with three millimeter needles and I made the size small for myself. I've always really enjoyed the classy finishings on this tank top. I think it looks really nice. It fits really well. And I really enjoyed the knitting for all of cotton merino. Really good yarn knitting experience. I definitely enjoyed it more than the pure silk knitting experience and I think the fabric is very like comfortable and not too hot. The only thing I remember changing in this pattern when I knit it was the pickup rate for the neckline. The pattern suggests picking up three out of every four stitches but I found when I did that it was really loose and kind of ruffling so I had to rip it out and then I did a pickup rate of two out of every three stitches and that sits a lot nicer. I followed the pattern for the pickup rate on the armholes and had no problem. I think everything sits pretty well and I really like this tank top. You can see the armhole is like a little bit deep so I don't really mind it. You know it's not really too visible if I pull it up like this and I do have to wear a strapless bra with this which I don't really mind. I know some people kind of do mind but I found even though I have like a bra with convertible straps where you can like cross them they still were visible so I don't know depending on you know what kind of undergarments you have you might have limited options for what you can wear with this tank top. 
really cute, really comfortable. It is knit with negative ease, but I feel like there is a lot of stretch still. Like I don't feel like it's suffocating me and it has a really snug fit. So really pleased with this pattern. I would knit it again. So we'll see if another camisole number five is in my future. My next project was the Vegas top by Suzanne Mueller. And I knit this as a commission for my sister. She wanted a really cropped tank top and picked out this pattern. The yarn that I used was Santa Scar and Lena in the color putty, which is a neutral kind of cream color and I enjoyed this pattern. I actually had a whole vlog for the process of knitting this from start to finish and my sister was really pleased with the finished result. I knit this on four and a half millimeter needles. It's a top-down construction with I-cord edging and I really enjoy knitting with the Santa's Garnelina. It's one of my favorite summer yarns to knit with. I find the knitting experience enjoyable and I find the finished fabric to be really easy and comfortable to wear. I would consider knitting another Vegas top for myself. I think it's just a good staple tank top to have in your wardrobe. This summer I also test knitted the Versailles scarf by Juliette Picot Designs and she's a designer based in Boston. I was really excited to test knit for her. This is a really cute lace scarf that you can wear in a variety of ways like around your neck or as a headband and I knit it out of the leftover knitting for all of pure silk from my Cumulus tee in the color Dusty Artichoke which now I'm realizing I don't actually have yarn to extend the hem on that one so I take that back what I said before because I used it in this project. I did end up gifting this project to a friend who had moved abroad, so I hope she is enjoying this. This was a really nice project to knit. You know, it had enough going on with the lace pattern that was charted to keep me engaged, but you know, it's a small little project. It's a great stash buster for some leftover summer yarns you might have in your stash. I use a little bit less than 50 grams of the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk, so if you have 50 grams of a fingering weight yarn, that would be a great yarn choice for this project. It does come in two sizes. I did do the longer length, so if you wanted to make the smaller length, obviously that would use less yarn, but really enjoyed this pattern and really enjoyed knitting it. This is my Kutar top by Sari Nordland, another summer tank top that I knit out of Santa's Garn Tin Lena in the color Pearl Gray. This is kind of a halter style tank top with I-cord straps. You knit the front and back panels following a chart, they're knit flat, and then you join at the underarms and then do stockinette for the rest of the body. I really like the folded hem detail of this tank top. I really love the lace pattern. It's just a stunning design and Overall, I think the finished piece is really classy. I really like how I gave myself a high neckline. I did really short I-cord straps, so the neckline sits pretty high. However, I did have a lot of construction, not issues, but I just didn't love the construction of this tank top. It was very fiddly and in the Line yarn, which is a cotton linen viscose blend, you know, it doesn't really hide any mistakes or tensioning issues. So I find that the join at the underarm was kind of messy. My like, uh, I cord pickup at the neckline was kind of messy and it just took a lot of effort to get it to look really polished. I did knit the front and back panels to pattern so when you finish the lace chart you do some stockinette before joining in the round and I had just knit to the pattern dimensions wasn't really thinking too much and then when I realized that I had joined in the round that it was going to be like way too deep it was going to hit you know way past my bra at my underarm so I did have to like make up for that by making my I cord straps extremely short. So if I were to knit this again, I would definitely look at how deep your kind of yoke is getting before joining in the round, because if you're like me on the petite side, you might need to crop it a bit to help it fit well. I also knit this to sort of a hybrid size between sizes two and three. I had originally cast on for the size three, and I wanted this to have zero ease as recommended in the pattern. If I had cast it on for size three and knit it to size three, it would have had a little bit of positive ease, whereas size two would have given me some negative ease. So sizes two and three are actually the same chart exactly. The only difference is when you cast on at the underarm, how many stitches you cast on. So I just did a number in between what was given for sizes two and three, and that's what kind of gave me my hybrid size. I'm really happy I did that. I think the finish fit fits well, of course, with the exception of how deep the underarm is. I would not knit this pattern again. I just thought the construction was too fiddly. And although I do really like the lace chart and I do really like the finished piece, I just, you know, I wouldn't put in the effort to do it again. I did knit this on both sides, two and a half and three millimeter needles. And I used a little bit more than two skeins of yarn for this tank top. I also omitted the waist shaping. It does get a little bit wider at the bottom of the tank top, but I just decided to knit it straight so it has the same stitch count all around to the hem. 
Also this summer I ended up knitting an Ozzel hat, which was like kind of surprising because it's not like a summer knit, but <laughs> this is the Ozzel hat by Petite Knit. I have made this pattern many times before. It is one of my favorite hat patterns to knit. The yarn that I used was Santa Scarn Pure Gint in the color Petroleum. I made the size adult woman on three and a half millimeter needles. I'm really pleased with this hat. I think it's super cute. The pure gint is a little bit itchy on my forehead. It definitely has kind of like a stiffer feel than if I knit this out of a merino, but I am really pleased with this hat. Don't have much more to say. You know, the also hat always gets good ratings from me. We're still trying on tank tops because apparently I couldn't stop knitting summer knits this year. <laughs> but this is the Audrey Top by Petite Knit. I knit this out of Quince & Co Sparrow, which is a 100% linen yarn, and I use their color black. What's it called? Oh, it's called Eclipse, but it's just the like standard black linen yarn that they carry. Now, this is knit from the bottom up in all stockinette. You join at the underarms and then, uh, or you split at the underarms and then knit flat the front and the back panels. Unlike the Kutar top, which is completely symmetrical, this is not symmetrical on the front and the back. I made the size small and knit this on five millimeter needles, and I ended up using five skeins of the yarn to knit this tank top. This was a surprise hit for the summer. I absolutely loved wearing this tank top. The 100% linen yarn was so comfortable to wear on even like the hottest days of the summer and it is machine washable and it's kind of encouraged to machine wash it because it really softens up the linen and gives it a good amount of drape. I was a little worried when I first wore this out because it did experience some like stretching where it was kind of getting too low at my underarm and I was worried it was just gonna stretch out way too much but I popped it in the washing machine and then it kind of shrunk back up to its original size so I think I just might need to continue doing that with this tank top if I find it you know stretching out too much just throw it in the wash and then wear it again. The color has faded a little bit from washing it a few times. Like it used to be a very deep black and you can see it's kind of more like a well, it kind of looks like a washed black, which I think is a good way to describe it. You know, nothing that I dislike. It's just something to know if you are trying to use this yarn and also plan on machine washing it. Because I can machine wash it, I'm not afraid to get super sweaty in it, so therefore I wore it a lot this summer, and I would definitely knit another one. I would knit it in a colorful color. I would knit it in a neutral. I just think this is a really good staple tank top, and it was a pretty quick knit to bang out and just add to my wardrobe over the summer. All right, we made it to the last summer knit of the year. This is my Lanakai Summer Tee. It's a pattern by Sally Yi. This is a top-down circular yoke t-shirt that is knit out of fingering weight yarn on four millimeter needles. I knit this out of Sorella Yarns Bamboo Sock, which is a blend of 80% superwash merino and 20% bamboo from their Spring Tonals collection in the color Pinot Noir. Now it is top down circular yoke with these beautiful bands of lace, but there is some raglan shaping at the underarm that I think helps it give a really nice fit. This t-shirt is meant to be oversized and drapey, and I feel like I really accomplished that with this yarn. I had a great knitting experience with this bamboo yarn, and I really like the finished fabric. And I actually have machine washed this because I wore it on a day where I got really sweaty and I was like, I need to machine wash this. And it survived the wash pretty well. I really can't tell that it's been like, agitated and the superwash yarn really held up. This did make the rest of my laundry pink though, so that was unfortunate, and that was on me, but you know, it happens, it happens. <laughs> I knit the size two for myself and used 175 grams of the fingering weight yarn because this is a hand dyed yarn. I did alternate skeins, but not for the whole project. Just when I was introducing the second skein, I did some helical knitting that, you know, you can't see where it's at, but I think it blended everything really well and I don't have any issues with color blocking or like a stripe where I started the new skein. I really love the twisted rib accents. I think it fits really well. Totally would knit another one and definitely recommend the pattern. This is my zipper sweater. This is a pattern by Petite Knit and I knit this out of Filcolana Peruvian Highland Wool in the color charcoal, held with Filcolana Tilia in the color black. I made myself a size small and I used five and a half millimeter needles for the body of this project. I did the twisted rib as indicated in the pattern. I know a lot of people sub in one by one rib, but I really like the twisted rib accents on this sweater. I did use the zipper that is sold on Petite Knit's website in the color black 
And for the zipper installation, I followed the Petite Knit video tutorial and found it to be pretty helpful. I hand sewed it in and it took a while, but worth the effort. This is a top-down raglan sweater. It's meant to be very oversized. It has about 11 inches of positive ease on me, and I definitely knit it like long. The sleeves are long, and I really love the comfy oversized fit. This fabric is very thick. It's very warm, especially with the mohair. I feel like I can only wear this on the coldest of days, but that's not a problem living in Massachusetts. We do have plenty of those, but I find it's not as wearable as maybe I would love it or want it to be. I know Petite Knit has a DK weight zipper sweater pattern and I think that would be a little bit more practical for everyday wear, but I really love this finished object regardless. And it's a good like outerwear piece. Like if I don't wanna wear a coat, I think this has enough warmth to keep me warm on like a moderately cold day. I did purchase the suggested yarn quantities for this pattern and I did use the suggested yarn for this pattern, but I was playing a serious game of yarn chicken at the end. I used almost all 10 balls of my Peruvian wool and used a little bit less than five balls of the silk mohair for my size. I did make this significantly shorter than the pattern directed and I also made the sleeve shorter. So if you are knitting this to pattern or if you normally like longer sweaters and you also just don't like yarn chicken, definitely buy more yarn than what's recommended in the pattern. My next project was one that I gifted and it is an also hat, kind of similar to my Pure Gint one, but I used a different yarn for this. I used San Garn Merino Wool, which is their superwash merino wool in the color Petroleum. I did not really like the yarn. You guys know I love the also hat pattern, so I'm not really going to say anything more about that. Would not recommend the yarn. It was kind of stretchy and gave the weird like uneven stockinette texture and I found it kind of splitty. So although it was fine knitting this project, I would not use that yarn again. Next up is my weekend hat by Petite Knit. This is an all over one by one ribbed hat that is double folded for a triple layer rim. I knit this out of Nightbright Yarn Co's DK in the color Starfish, which is this really cool variegated pink yarn. This yarn was gifted to me and it was a really nice knitting experience. Now this weekend hat is very long, but I didn't find it too difficult to knit. Like I found myself motivated to knit because you have breaks in the knitting where you have to do double knitting. And I found those markers to be kind of motivating and kept me engaged in the project. I think the variegated yarn also helped. I knit this on three and a half millimeter needles and I made the suggested size for my head circumference, which was the size medium in the pattern. However, I find this to be tight. I was hoping that as I wore it more, it would loosen up. I know when I first talked about this in my podcast, I said it was tight, but I'm like, maybe I'll wear it in and it'll stretch out. I have worn it a decent amount and I feel like it's still too tight. So if I were to knit this again, I would size up one size to the large. I don't really love how the tightness makes like the tip look a little bit weird. Like, I feel like, okay, it looks kind of fine now, but it kind of like sucks into my head and then it like leaves the tip kind of pointy. It doesn't really like have a natural flow and it also leaves ribbing marks on my forehead, which I don't love. <laughs> and sometimes it like slides up because my hair is slippery and it's just so tight that it wants to compress. I also, there's more about this hat. I feel like the double knitting lines, the folding, it doesn't really line up on the double knitting lines as much as I want them to. And sometimes as I'm wearing it, it kind of like, you know, as the fabric settles, it like will pull the double ribbing so it's visible like that. So I don't really love that. Like, I wonder if I just didn't do the double ribbing, if it would look more natural, because you can totally see the line and sometimes it just doesn't line up and I feel like it looks weird, so. Yeah, I mean, the weekend hat, you can tell by my tone. It was like a fine project. I feel like the finished object is not entirely where I wanted it to be. So I don't know if I would knit it again. I'm not like totally against it. Maybe I need to give it one more shot, but I think there are a lot of other hat patterns that I prefer over this one. Like the Bothy hat, that was a nice one. I did use 114 grams of the DK weight yarn to knit this. Whew. All right, don't worry guys, we're almost at the end. <laughs> Are you getting tired? Because I'm getting tired. Uh, this is my Whitmore cardigan. This is a pattern by Amy Loudon. It's a top-down circular yoke lace cardigan. I knit this out of Sorella Yarns Classic DK in the color Townhouse, which was from their Autumn in New York collection. Now this sweater, I have had quite the time knitting. I have frogged it once, re-knit it, 
So I knitted a total of two times almost, and I still don't like the fit. I don't think it looks that good. I think the yoke is too deep, the sleeves are too tight, and there's just a lot of issues with it, and I literally have not worn it once since casting it off. I just don't feel comfortable wearing it, so it's best to frog it and repurpose the yarn because I think the yarn is really beautiful and will be better suited in something that I will actually use. I did knit the size extra small for myself, and I used four and a half millimeter needles, and I used a surprisingly like little amount of yarn compared to what I thought I would use. I ended up using only 390 grams of the DK weight yarn, so... Yeah, I did crop a lot of things. Like, I think my sleeves are shorter than they should be, even though they're still a little bit long. I think the body, I did do the short length. There are some, like, options in this pattern to do, like, a longer length and also options to do either a bishop sleeve or a tapered sleeve. So my tapered sleeves are, you know, they're very tight and my short length is almost not as short as I want it to be. But you do the button band at the same time as the rest of the cardigan. So with your buttonhole spacing, you're kind of forced to make it to a length that's at the interval of the buttonholes unless you know ahead of time that you're going to change the length and then like you do the math to reallocate the buttonholes or you will have like one buttonhole at the bottom that's not at an accurate length, which Honestly, it might not be a big deal to you, but just an FYI if you're trying to knit this cardigan and want to modify it. This is my Lana vest, which was kind of a spontaneous cast on this fall, but I'm so happy I knit it. This is such a gorgeous piece and I love wearing it. I knit the pattern by Irene Lynn. It has all over cables and texture and the yarn that I use is originally lovely Lana in the color Merlot. This vest has a lot of positive ease. It has 13 inches of positive ease on me. I did do the size one, which is the smallest size but I really like kind of the slouchy fit of this slip over. I did crop it just a bit. I omitted one repeat of the pattern before starting the ribbing, and I think all of the details of this pattern is just stunning, especially the side panel with the cable that goes into the split hem. It's just so gorgeous. The yarn that I used is originally lovely Lana in the color Merlot, which is this really nice Aran weight Highland wool, and I really enjoyed knitting with it. I think the color is beautiful. I normally don't wear this slip over with like a black shirt. I think it, that's like too low contrast. I normally wear it with either white or like a gray underneath, um, but regardless, you can see how nice that this vest fits. I knit this on five millimeter needles and I ended up using a little bit less than four skeins of the Lana yarn to make this project. Next up are my dorsal socks, which are also a pattern by Helen Stewart from the Handmade Sock Society pattern bundle. These have a cute little motif at the back that sort of look like dolphin tails or whale tails to kind of fit with the nautical theme of that Sock Society pattern bundle. The yarn that I use is Sorella Yarn Nylon Sock in the color Toile, which is from the Spring Tonals collection. And this was the first time that I did a fish lips kiss heel I wanted to try it out I thought the knitting experience of it was pretty fun like it was definitely less fiddly and annoying compared to the heel flap and gusset however I've worn these a few times since finishing the sock and I don't know if I love how it wears on my foot you can see how like stretched out this ankle part is I think Maybe I need to adjust the fish lips kiss heel pattern for my like heel depth, or maybe I should just go back to the heel flap and gusset. I feel like it doesn't fit the way I want it to, and it kind of slides down my foot instead of saying staying like snugly on my foot, if that makes sense. I did knit the size small of this sock on 2.5 millimeter needles, and the fit was good, but the stockinette fabric, I think I just prefer a tighter gauge, so next time I'm gonna size down my needle size and size up my stitch count. I will quickly mention that I did knit a bunch of Oslo hats for Christmas this year. I'll just quickly put a picture in them. I don't feel like going over the details. I did talk a lot in detail about them in my most recent podcast, episode number 27, so if you want to learn more, you can either check out that video or check out my Ravelry page for the details. Now, I also finished this December my Boho Blush Shawl. This is a pattern by Andrea Mowry, and I knit this out of Sorella Yarns Classic Sock, which is a 100% superwash merino in the color red, which is from the Taylor Swift collection. This shawl is kind of a circular shape. You cast on right here in the middle and then you increase as you knit it. It is garter stitch, brioche, and lace all alternating to make this really beautiful big shawl. 
Now, I really enjoyed knitting this pattern. It did take me longer than I expected it to, which is fine. It is fingering weight, and I used 3.25 millimeter needles, and I ended up using about 218 grams of the fingering weight yarn. So definitely a very involved knit, but was super relaxing because of all of the garter stitch. I found the brioche to be very engaging. It was my first time knitting brioche, and I had a lot of fun knitting it. Overall, really recommend the pattern if you're interested in shawls, if you're interested sit in this kind of style scarf. I think it's really easy to wear and I've been wearing it a lot since I finished it. And after I finished the boho blush shawl, I also gift knit this pair of DK weight ribbed socks for Christmas. They are knit out of Dirty Water Dye Works Lucia sock, which is a DK weight 7525 sock yarn in the color fog. I kind of made up my own pattern. It was loosely based on the Crazy Sock Ladies DK weight vanilla sock pattern, but I added my own two by two rib and I did do a different stitch count than what's in the pattern, so I did have to follow different instructions for the heel flap and gusset, but overall I think they turned out pretty good. They're pretty cute. It was a pretty quick gift knit, and they ended up fitting the recipient quite well, which I'm glad because I did not have all of their foot measurements to follow, but I used the Craft Yarn Council size charts knowing the recipient's shoe size, and that helped me out a lot. All right guys, get excited. We've reached the last project of 2023 and this is my Turtle Dove Shawl by Sari Nordland. This was a mystery knit along that I did in the month of December and I followed along with the mystery clues. I tried to keep up each week and I think I did a pretty good job of keeping up. This is a DK weight shawl pattern. It's knit on three and a half millimeter needles. You can use any sort of DK weight yarn or a wool and a mohair. The yarn that I used was Pickles Bliss, which is an interesting combo of alpaca, wool and mohair. This is a single ply yarn. It has a bit of a halo on it. It is extremely soft and I held it double and I ended up using four millimeter needles for this shawl just to make sure that the fabric had enough drape. I was really impressed with this pattern. I mean, it's huge. I did not know it was going to be this big, but I'm really happy with the size because I feel like it's really easy to wear. I've actually worn this a good amount of times since finishing it. I feel like it is perfect for just making your neck like warm if you're cold. Like I've been wearing it to the office when I go into the office and it just adds enough like stylistic interest in the outfit without you doing much and also keeps your neck warm. I really like the size of this shawl because you know, you can keep your neck warm, but it's not bulky and you don't have super long ends to figure out if you have like an oversized scarf. Sometimes it's hard to figure out how to like wrap those. And I love oversized scarves, but this I just find a lot easier to put on. The pattern is all charted. There's some bobbles, some traveling twisted stitches. There's some cables and it's all surrounded by I-cord kind of double knit edges. I think it's double knit. They kind of resemble I-cord but I think the method of knitting is more similar to double knitting. But yeah, this has kind of inspired me to want to knit more of this style shawl. I mentioned at the very beginning of my video that the Sophie scarf I just feel didn't wasn't too practical, but this I think has the same intent, but is much more practical to wear. So I'll definitely be knitting more of these like size scarves in the future. Would recommend the pattern and I had a lot of fun knitting it. And with that, we have reached the end of 2023. I have a huge pile of knits on my bed that I have to clean up now, but I hope that you guys enjoyed going over all of my projects with me. If you want to go back and look at details of any of these projects, they all will be linked in my Ravelry page, which will be in the description box. I know sometimes when I go through all these projects, I miss details like how much yarn I used or needle size, so that is all recorded in every single one of my projects. If you wanna see more knitting content from me. I put out videos about once a week where I talk about all of my projects and what I'm knitting. So I'd love for you to hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel. And thank you again for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.